Hey, guys, people, we're back with Buckster. We're at Professor College. <laughs> Professor Buck, we're talking about bullet and barrel expansion. So he's going to explain how a bullet goes down a barrel for this is for what is it called barrel harmonics or barrel harmonics basically uh, most people don't realize that when you take a bullet and you put it and you shoot it down a barrel and you have in between 55,000 and 70,000 psi behind it a bullet for example if I was using a 308 the bullet diameter is 308 the bore diameter is 300 when a bullet is fired down the 30 caliber barrel, the, the lands and grooves you know, engrave the, the rifling on the bullet. But there's also a force placed on the barrel itself. In other words, the, the 308 caliber bullet going through a 30 caliber hole, 300, there's four thousandth of an inch of pressure in a groove made on the say the, the top of the, the bullet and the bottom of the bullet. There's also pressure built on the uh, on, on the, uh, the diameter of the barrel. The barrel actually expands to a measurable degree. Now you can t tell us with a strain uh, gauge, which is a very fine electronic device that measures the amount of strain that the barrel is going on. We can tell you how many thousands of PSI the, uh, the round was fired at. But as the, the bullet traverses the barrel, the barrel actually gets larger until it passes, then it shrinks back down to its original size. So therefore, the, uh, the fact that, that the, the, the barrel is changing diameters, and there's a lot of different pressures involved, the, the harmonics of the barrel cause it to do some, some things like this. And from your point of view, the barrel it can either wave up and down, left and right, or in a Z pattern. It can wave in a lots of different patterns based upon the harmonics of the barrel. Smaller barrels generally have larger diameter or larger amplitudes of the harmonics. Uh, larger bull barrels have smaller things. So, so this is a gross oversimplification, but a, a small whippy barrel might do this, uh -huh. and a, a ball barrel might do this. Uh -huh. Now those are both measured in, in millions of an inch. Now, that's why they that's, say stiffer barrels are more accurate. That's correct. Now, there are a couple different ways to make barrels stiffer. The easiest way is to make them fatter. It also makes them heavier and more costly, with more material. Uh -huh. uh, another way is to take a stiffer barrel and then machine off some grooves on it or flute it and that makes the gives you more surface area allowing the the barrel to cool off faster it also makes it lighter weight and stiffer for the same amount of weight it's not any stiffer than a we'll say a, a one inch diameter bull barrel if it's fluted it'll be lighter than a one inch diameter unfluted barrel but it won't be the stiffness will be relatively the same um, now a, a three eighths inch diameter barrel they tend to be a little more whippy. The the company of, of uh, Winchester and let's see Browning developed a thing called a boss system, which had a muzzle brake which was affixed to the end of the barrel, and it was adjustable. You could could screw it in or screw it out, and in doing so, you would change the harmonics of the barrel because you change the overall length of the barrel. The idea behind that was to modify the, the barrel frequency. So again, this is a gross oversimplification. If a barrel was whipping up and down, you can see at one point it stops going up and it's not going down. And then at the bottom here, it's not going down, it's not going up yet. So those two spots in, t in time, in a frequency, would be the most accurate place for to control vertical displacement or displacement of a bullet by adjusting the length of the barrel in the vibration pattern we'll say a, you have a 300 Weatherby Magnum and the rounds are coming out roughly 3100 feet per second 180 grain bullet so 3100 feet per second if you measure your dispersion of the in the the uh, in the 
feet per second, you have one round that's 3,100, one round is 3,095, and one round is 3,115, that's a 20 feet per second dispersion. So if you know that, that you can adjust it so that all of the rounds, if you know exactly about where the, the sweet spot is, that at, the, at this point in time with a 3,100 feet per second bullet, the barrel stops going down and is not going back up yet. If you can adjust it so that that's where all your bullets come out, you will cut down your vertical displacement. Ah, so, and we got about this on whether or not a suppressor makes a gun accurate or less accurate. Now what a suppressor does is a suppressor, basically, it's a muffler. It captures the gas, it holds back some additional back pressure against the, uh, against the action, and it, it uh, cools the gas, it turbulates it, knocks down the flame pattern, and slows it down. So that when the bullet exits the suppressor, the velocity is uh, below low supersonic speeds of the gas. Now, which is more accurate, a, uh, a fast attach or quick attach muzzle brake? or a direct thread one. In my experience and the experience of other guys that have, that have seen a lot of different suppressors shot, the direct thread is more accurate. And you go, well, why is that? I don't see any difference because I've got a quick thread yank and kill them. I like the way it fits and goes on really quick. So one thing that most people forget is this tube has volume. When you place a bullet back in the back end and fire it, before the bullet ever exits the bore, all of the gas that's already existing inside the bullet. The atmospheric air is forced in front of the bullet, out the muzzle, into the suppressor. And the suppressor is going to vibrate. The more that the suppressor vibrates, the more the barrel will vibrate in sympathy with the suppressor that's hung on the end of it. So if you can keep Yeah, the suppressor almost acts like a leverage a little bit. It gets longer. It's, 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 it's a moment arm. It's way out here. And it's an extra mass, anywhere from 16 to 36 ounces. I mean, some of them are real heavy. The 50 caliber can weigh three or four pounds. It's really heavy suppressors. So with that gas, that's being, or which is atmospheric air, being forced through there at a rapid rate, it causes frequencies uh, to be imparted to the barrel, which can either be uh, deleterious or advantageous to the rifle. Generally, additional mass out here cuts down on some of the natural frequencies generated by the ammunition. So a solid suppressor out here will vibrate less. Vibrate less than a uh, quick attach. Uh, than a quick attach, and a solid suppressor will also dampen the vibration of your standard barrel. Most people will see it between a quarter of an inch and a half an inch an improvement in their group size with a particular rifle and you'll see around 50 to 75 PSI, or feet per second increase in velocity. And we got a customer, we'll end it. Thanks, Buck.